In this video, we're going to focus on clock, clock and oscillators as it relates to PIC 18F1220. Um, this particular uh, microcontroller has a lot more flexibility with the type of clock uh, that is using. A typical processor, basically, it's going to have a primary uh, point of entry, usually two pins, and uh, depending on what frequency you want to run it, and what frequency it is capable of running, you will purchase an oscillator. Um, those oscillators are usually crystal oscillators, which that come typically in a metal can or some form of protected uh, EMI protected device. And they're really a crystal that has been cut precisely to give you whatever frequency you need for your um, system. Um, PIC 1220, which is our processor, also is capable of doing that so you could hook up your crystal to oscillator one oscillator two and become a primary um, driver of that in addition to that you notice it has the capability of putting the oscillator to sleep so it saves um, power because remember these are built out of cmos so if you're not clocking it you are not using power and then there is secondary oscillator and all, all kinds of other things that could be used with this processor. For the work uh, we're going to focus on is, a, is that we're going to be using in the internal oscillator block. So we're not going to use any of these pins for any purposes. Um, we're going to be using the internal uh, oscillator. And we're going to run it at the slowest mode, which is the default, which is 31 kilohertz. Or so although the internal oscillator can let you go all the way to 8, and as you can see, the OSCON, uh, the SFR register OSCON pins uh, bits 4 through 6 allow you to set them. As a default, it's set here, and we're always going to be using it at that mode. We're going to assume that the system clock, the period of system clock, is 32 kilohertz for for some of 32 microsecond um, for simplicity so when we are doing calculation we're going to assume that the system clock the period for the system clock is 32 microsecond this becomes very important later on when we come back to do analysis of uh, um, how to calculate how long your program takes to do a certain task. If you're interested in more uh, details and understanding kind of how all of this fit together, this, uh, this is one of the registers, there are many registers you can see, this is kind of an architectural level, it's saying, hey, there is a place you can go, um, OSCON, config one high, um, are the places you can go to make uh, uh, changes to the, the other one is uh, internal oscillator, um, you know, what frequency is running and all of those are controlled by these various registers. In here, we're going to leave it at default. We're not going to make any changes and that gives us a uh, uh, internal um, oscillator running at the period of 32 microseconds uh, and we will not need to connect anything to these clock pins. As a matter of fact, those those pins are free for us to use as I.O. But if you want to learn more, there is great place like this register is really crucial for us to know about because, for example, BET7 is used to um, reduce power. If you're not using your CPU, you, they can be put into a uh, sleep or idle mode where they use a lot more less power. As a default, zero is set, which is a run mode executing. And then these three bits right here allow you to select where we are again we are running the clock right in this mode okay and then there are other things that you could fix that you could uh, work on if you're really interested in this topic which is a very uh, broad and there's got a lot of interesting material in it i would encourage you to take a look at the uh, data sheet and the data sheet provides a whole section on oscillator configuration how do you set the primary? How do you set the secondary? Um, and um, all of those. Okay, so I'm going to leave that uh, for for you to take a look at if you're interested. Let's go ahead and go back um, to uh, 
um, to the um, uh, back to trying to figure out how we use this information. So now we know that we are going to run this thing at 31 uh, kilohertz, roughly 32 microseconds per um, per um, cycle. So 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 when I'm going and looking at an instruction, let's go ahead and grab an instruction and take a look at it. So let's say I am looking. Let's say I'm looking at instruction. This is a byte oriented. I just copied a couple of uh, sheets of uh, instruction summary to talk about this. So when we look at, for example, when we look at add WF, it says it takes one cycle. What does that mean? How long is one cycle is? And what I want to make sure we, we kind of clear up, when it says cycle in this table, it is talking about instruction cycle. Okay, and that's the same. So now that's a simple one, 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 for all like, let's say, add WF and WF, clear F, but then once in a while, you got multiple choices and that really has to do with you know if is it going to skip if it's going to skip for example for this instruction which is uh, skip if equal if it doesn't skip then it's one cycle if it is skip is two cycle and if it has to skip over a two word uh, instruction then it's three cycle so that's what, how you decide what it is Branch is another one that is one or two. Again, one is if you don't have to branch, you just normally go through two cycle if you have to branch. Now the question is, what is an instruction cycle and how is it different from the clock cycle? So the oscillator or the system clock is the one we said we're gonna use an internal RC and it's gonna be 32 microsecond. So an instruction cycle, it's gonna be four. The one, two, three, four. Typically, uh, Q1 is used to fetch instruction. Two is usually used to decode the instruction. Three is used to execute it. And the last cycle is used to write out the result. Typically, that's what it is. Some some instructions may have a little bit different required different than that. So so if each clock cycle is thirty, that means the instruction cycle is going to be four of those. So if somebody is telling you this ins this instruction takes one cycle to execute, what they're telling you is that for for our so based on our assumption, that would be one hundred and twenty eight microsecond because our clock is this. So if the clock was faster, of course, this time would be shorter as well. So that's that. Now let's go take a look at some that maybe do it a little bit differently. Here, for example, this is a bit test, skip if clear. And in this particular case, when you look at the number of cycles, it basically tells you, hey, this is gonna take one or two cycle. So first cycle is going to decode, read, process, and no operation on fourth if it's, if it's skipping. If it's skipping, then there's no operation on the second cycle. If skip and follow a two-word instruction, then this is what's going to happen. So, so the first, inst first cycle is if it doesn't have to skip or anything. Uh, it's just going to decode the, the stuff, read whatever register it needs to read, process the data, and then the last one, which because it doesn't have anything to write out, it's not going to do anything. If it's skipping a one word instruction, then it's going to take one cycle, if not two more cycles. So this is, this is how this basically works. Okay, one cycle, two cycle, three cycle, depending on what's doing. So this is this is a bed test. Now, how does all that information help us? So so let's say, let's say you have a case. Somebody gives you a set of instruction. And for, for, for this case, I just kind of write a program and they're asking you, how long does it take uh, for this uh, program to get executed? And, and, and uh, this is uh, intentionally made to be a little bit different. So, so we have to kind of have a conversation about what is really the number of cycles. So let's say that we are given, an inst we've given a set of instruction and the instruction is move LW 0x84. So 84 is moved to W register. Then that is ended and WF with port B. So 
So W, which had 84 in it, is going to be or ended with port B and going to be put back into W register. Then we're going to do a bed test, F, S, C, and then we're going to do port A, comma, 3. So we're going to test port A, bed 3, um, uh, to see if it's clear or not. If it's clear, then we're going to jump um, this instruction. And then we're going to branch to delay. Okay. Now, if somebody asks us how long this, this, instruction, this set of instruction will take, what we have to do is we're going to come back here and say, okay, let's figure out number of instruction cycle for each one of these things. And the way we do that, we go to this table and say, okay, I want move LW. Unfortunately, I didn't put move LW in here, but that would, that I know the num number of instruction cycles is one. Okay. And then and WF, I have and WF here. So we're going to go and WF is one instruction or one instruction cycle in this column. You see that? So we're going to put a one here. And then we got to do a bed test that skip happened to have it right here. Oh, and that's kind of interesting. This will not really, depends on what happens. One, if it doesn't skip. Two, if you skip a two word. Um, if the next, next instruction is a two byte or one word instruction. Three, if it's two. Uh, we already know this is, a, this is a one word instruction. So only possibilities are one, if it doesn't skip. Two, if it skips. Clear F, W register. We're going to go over here and see clear F. A w, so C at right there. And that's again one instruction. I can see most of these only take one instruction. This is a risk based um, processor and they really try to keep it to one cycle at a time. Then we're going to look at branch. Branch always branches, therefore, is always two. You see that? So that's two cycles. Okay. All right. Now it depends. So, so we can't really tell anybody how long it takes to go through this because it really depends on what is in port A because if, um, depending on port B, that would change. But at least we can tell people that this first instruction takes 128 microsecond. This next instruction takes also 128 microsecond. And then this instruction depend, it will take either 128 microsecond or it's going to take 256 microsecond. And then this is 128 microsecond. And finally, the branch always takes 256 microsecond. Okay. If you were told what value is in port A, we could potentially uh, take a look at this and see uh, if uh, if it's going to jump, not jump, or what's going to go on. Okay, uh, so this is an example of uh, of um, using um, what we have learned here to calculate how long it takes to go through a set of instruction. If you're doing performance testing or you're trying to build something with a timing requirement, it is very important to understand what the clock speed is, how the clock speed is used to calculate how long a piece of a segment of the program takes to execute. Let's go ahead and go back and take a look at, do a quick review of what we've covered in here. We started by saying this is this device, PIC 18F 1220, has lots of different ways of getting the core oscillators going and getting a system clock or the oscillator clock going. In, and then we mentioned that if you want more information, there is uh, in uh, oscillator configuration part of a data sheet has a lot of information. For for the purposes of this uh, discussion, and just to simplify the process, we're going to use the internal oscillator so we don't have to get a crystal, and we're going to set it to the base uh, speed, the lowest speed, because it's easier to uh, look at and time it and look at it on the scope and other places. So we're gonna. So that means that our uh, system uh, period, or sometimes it's also referred to an oscillator period, is 32 microsecond. 
but most of the time when they're talking about instructions, they are talking about four times the chart. So, so period of a instruction uh, clock is four times a oscillator or a system clock. This is also called T system. Okay, and we decided that for for our for our assumption of internal low speed configuration for the oscillator that would be 128 microsecond and then and then we took a look at this and had conversation that most most instruction takes one cycle some of the branch or skip instructions could take one two or three depending on whether they jump or that they don't jump and in the case of a skip whether they're jumping over two word instruction or one word instruction and then we kind of applied that to a simple uh, program here uh, assembly code and asking how long it takes to execute through this thing and we noticed that um, most most instruction will take one instruction cycle which in with our stuff is only 128 microseconds some cases took two uh, if they're jumping or skipping and that uh, was specified here uh, if you had a loop for example the delay loop that uh, you do and then you figure out how many times you're going to go through the loop you multiply it by number of instruction, multiply each, that total number with 128 and it gives you how long it takes to process a loop. Okay, so that pretty much covers the section on um, oscillators and uh, clocks.